All right, let's get back going again. Now we've all had coffee and healthy snacks. Um, so Tony Andre is here to uh, prove the, the widely held theory that the best way to get a talk accepted is to run a microconference um, <laughs> and talk about GPU resets. Thank you very much. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm, um, I'm here to talk about GPU resets again. And uh, hopefully, we can get some ideas together on how we can improve on that. So uh, GPU resets can happen after an invalid GPU command uh, when your shader goes on an infinite loop one or when you have some power management issues with the firmware. Uh, so there are a lot of things that can ha can cause a GPU resets. And the approach that happens in Mesa is that user space drivers ask the kernel if everything's okay. And the Mesa can do something about it. So, but we don't have a consensus here on what should be done. And some implementations think, believe that they need to queue the, the Qt app. And also the kernel can uh, detect an infinite loop and issue a reset it by itself. Uh, so yeah, the question on how should GPU resets be implemented, it's open. Uh, everyone, every driver has its own, own way of doing that, uh, but at least we have a documentation now to try to get every, everyone on the same page. So this is like the, the guidelines um, that we hope that we, we can get to a common implementation. Um, so every DRM driver has an API for that. So we have one for Intel, one for AMD, one for MSM. Um, so my fir the first question of my presentation is how can we get a DRM API for that? Uh, because one thing that gets uh, on the way here is that GPU resets are linked to contexts and every DRM driver has its own context implementation. So my first question is, it makes sense to have something like a structured DRM context to help, help with that? Dave? <laughs> There you talk, you are. Yeah, I, I'd have to be sold a lot better. Uh, I, we, we did have a DRM context concept many, many years ago, and we didn't carry forward with it very much. Um, I, think, I think the question you need to answer here is, what do we get from this, from the ecosystem or from the user space point of view? Like, it's like, yeah, we have a commonality here, and it, is kind of messy that every driver does this, but every driver has its own command submission API, so you already have to deal with submitting the commands, so getting the reset information by the same API is not hugely like, what's the win in terms of the, the bigger picture or the for like user point or for the drivers in the user space, what commonality do we get out of this? Because, yeah, like I, I, there might be some you know, use in having a context in the kernel, but I'm, I'm not seeing how much code I'm going to get pulled out of this into a common thing, or how, how you know, where the big win is, I suppose, yeah, it's like. Okay, yeah, my hope would be to get, because nowadays if um, something happens. <laughs> that <was> wrong. <laughs> <laughs> nowadays if a reset happens, um, every driver will do something different, and uh, I was hoping that with a common API, everyone sh um, would be obliged to, to go in the same direction. I don't know. Yeah, that was my hope. I guess the main or the other motivating thing I can see for it is it sort of depends on what happens with the scheduler, which is pretty unknowable. But you know, the, the priority for scheduler stuff is derived from context. So, Maybe there's an opportunity to like clean something up there if we had a common notion of a, a context, but priority. 
Is context a meaningful UAPI object, asked Dave? I mean, it is to all the drivers, but, <laughs> you know, I'm, I don't immediately know what we'd gain from having a, a DRM common context thing as, like, first class and maybe surface to UAPI. With that idea that you had of like we could, um, you know, we could make a sort of a everyone operate the same way across the, the drivers easier. Like, like a, maybe like having a, like IGTs that sort of def define what we want to see, like a, like a conformance thing in the IGT level might be helpful to drive something like that because then you can, well, at least we've got one test and if you build your driver towards that, making sure that test works, then you should operate like all the other drivers or, you know, that, that, that might be a win I could see making this more useful that, you know, we, you could drive this sort of, I, I, it's very hard to drive saying we want, uh, we want you all to operate the same way, but it's very easy to say just pass this test and people may think about it more. So, you know, but I'm not sure again if there's enough right now to just start with that or whether you want to start with trying to do the test and then trying to work out how it will work. Okay. So, um, yes, we need a test for that. And how do we, how, how, how is the proper way to get this test written? Because I couldn't figure out um, a way to, from user land, to know that this driver is okay after the reset. If, because uh, what we see a lot on MDGPU is that you just get um, a blank um, dark screen after a bad reset. So we need to, I, I don't know, um, how can user land check for that, you know? If AMD GPU, it's a bad reset. No, <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, in that, that's like another, like there's no way for you to write a test that will make AMD fix reset, unfortunately. You know, it's like, they try and they they get a bit further, and the next chip might work better. But the two chips ago breaks, and it, it's yeah, it's a constant keeping up to date. With like I, I think Intel and Nvidia have a lot more robustness around resetting than AMD have, and um, yeah, and, it, and I, yeah, I don't know how you know it. Like it's, it, usually you know because the machine's still running, because otherwise it, your, your machine either dies or everything gets stuck in a, a you know a, a kernel wait wait loop somewhere. And it's like yeah. But I, I don't know how, it, how you would definitely say things are good, the GPU reset it, because, yeah, you would have to monitor for about 10, 20 seconds more to make sure you didn't have a, some thread stuck in a CPU loop forever. And, uh, yeah, it's messy. I, I, I think one thing that might point of be useful, and some of them do have this, I think, is a way to trigger a reset through, like, DebugFS or something like that. that yeah, there's a way to do that. And maybe, again, that's another thing if we expose this sort of, context thing in debug FS objects, you could then have that API be a standard trigger to trigger resets and make the testing a bit easier. You know, that might be another way of thinking about it. Okay, so do you think the way to, to check if the, um, the driver is good is like to, tra to track for the threads, if they survive, if they, if they are stuck in the IO control, something like that? Yeah, I, 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 the way it dies is so bad that it's generally like, yeah, and I, I've been hitting them all the week with AMD GPU again. And it's like you're generally just sitting there, and you know, other random CPU threads get stuck, waiting for something. It's never, you know, it, it locks up the K workers, or it lock, you know, it does really hard to detect stuff from the from sitting at your machine. Like you've no screen, but from you can LS and it might work, or you could LS and it might hang, or you could maybe LS and then you try to sudo and you can't do that because. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's just unstable, an uh, unstable machine, and there's no way the way. The, o the only way I could kind of, again, I'm not sure I do a program, but like D message is usually got the information that either the reset happened or it didn't. So it yes. must be in there somewhere. Like, it, usually it's like 
there may be some way you can hook into the driver and say, did that reset actually succeed at the driver level and that, pipe that out? And that's yeah. the, so I just don't think we report that properly at the moment. I, generally, though, it's, if, if it didn't work, your test is probably going to die before it gets logged to disk. So, you know, it's like... I see. Yeah, I'm afraid that the driver will lie to me and say that survived, but uh, the screen is just a black screen. Um, yeah, so there's no way to, I don't know, poke the... Um, in, it the my buffer and to to check if things are getting there. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Hello? Cool. Yeah, yeah. I I mean there sort of is like there's some you've got uh chameleon from Google and other HDMI capture, but that's usually the best way. Like some of them do have CRC and I think that's there on some AMD devices, but there's no there's no good standard way that everyone supports. Okay. And, and also generally, again, if it's dead and you try to do any of those things, it's just going to hang in the kernel. You're not going not to be able to make forward progress. It'll just The machine will lock up and you'll have to reboot it. So it's like, yeah, it's one of those like, yeah, it, do I need to reboot the machine? If not, it succeeded. Otherwise, yeah, I need to reboot the machine. Okay, so in, su in summary, do you believe that things are so fragile right now? If that I can just check if the system is responsive. That means that reset succeed. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. That's probably as close as you'll get. I think I think there might be worth looking into the drivers and seeing when they what information you know that they print and demessage because like the MDGP wouldn't generally say is the reset succeeded and when it doesn't usually lie about that. It, yeah, it does. It does. It yeah, does. or it resets one piece and then the next piece falls over. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe surfacing up a, a reset counter into debugfs per device might be a shout and then just try to run a really basic job like run a, a compute shader that pokes a value in memory and oh, okay, okay. Whether or not that actually occurs after a reset yeah well, I, I think on amd as well we like to do ring tests and stuff after a reset to try and recheck that the ring is at least submittable but like again sometimes that succeeds and the next thing you do blows up it's yeah. we have sort of turned a bit left though from like what should the generic DRM semantics of GPU resets be to why is AMD GPU really buggy? Yeah, well, yeah, it drives one drives the other. Unfortunately, I think I think one thing that is like, are we trying to aim for, you know, 3D driver submitted bad things? Like, I, you know, that's a different problem than the power management one. Like, power management going bad usually means that there's something else unstable in your system, and then the reset might happen, and you will probably reset again t two seconds later. Yeah, it's, Whereas when you've got a tree, when you've got an app missubmitting stuff, or you've got a you know a, a malicious app trying to just trigger resets, there are different things to solve for, like and just detecting those and making the semantics around like should I just kill the app or should I just hang and leave the app stuck in D state or you know what what should you do in those situations? And I think like there's already been a number of uh, contentious discussion. That's probably the nice way of saying it about what. AMD should the, the user space drivers should do whether the X server should die like we've had that with Intel it just exits and you're like okay where did my server go and it's like yeah so yeah there's there's, there's a lot of debate around even what the, how they should operate from the high level OpenGL Vulkan user space APIs and and they're even specified and there's still a lot of debate about how we should do it so yeah I have a slide for that as well um, so yeah for the OpenGL robustness, um, there's no consensus on what should we do if an uh, uh, app isn't using the um, robust API. Um, yeah, but I don't know if anyone would, would like to argue for, for some policy if we should definitely kill those apps because they will probably just hang forever anyway or if the user should have the chance to do this by themselves? Yeah, like my feeling on the robustness thing is every compositor should be robustness. Every system app that's generally installed should be robustness. And if it's just a game that's not using it, then killing it's fine. But you should, GTK should all be robustness. Like all of the things that are drawing your desktop and do things like that should have robustness handling. And this should not be an optional thing for those sort of things because, uh, yeah, again, Killing a game, no one's going to care. But when it's Firefox or stuff, that that has an, you know, an actual user impact, and we should make sure they have robustness used as and 
make, you know, talk to the compositor and writers and say, look, robustness is important. We, we should be enabled again. And that removes the problem that, that AMD has created there because Marek is blowing away apps people care about. And it's like, well, if those apps had robustness, this wouldn't happen. So why don't we just get the bloody apps? See, so it's a way to force everyone to be robust. Otherwise, yeah. they will be killed. The problem with undefined behavior, it's like defining it's really hard after the fact. So like, but there is defined behavior for robustness, so we should just make people use the defined path. Um, I see. Um, another uh, problem with GP resets is that we want to, we would like to know what caused the GP reset in the first place. Uh, but this is also very challenging to know. Uh, because a lot of things can be locked inside the, firm, the firmware side. Um, so my question is, what's available for, for us in the open source on how to, wh what should we collect from the GPU resets um, to, to get to the bug reports later? Um, what would be useful for, for us? It's not something you're trying to like analyze programmatically, but just trying to get <clears throat> a bunch of logs to to look at by eye later, right? To look by what, sorry? By eye. Mm -hmm. Okay, by eye, okay. Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, yeah, what, I mean, uh, I would like to know what would, what can you get from, from the driver right now? Um, if we could, if we can have like a standard DRM, um, you know, output. Yeah, I mean, on on the ARM side, like speaking both for Mali as well as like for Drino, um, there is Dev Core Dump, mm -hmm. um, which yeah is really device specific, but that's a a pretty good way to and a nicely standardized way with a UAPI, which isn't terrible to to dump out a load of relatively free form, you know, here was the state of the device when it went under and like some things which may have led to it, you know, even, um, yeah, like Marley's got firmware scheduling as well and we can scrape logs out of it. But most of the time it's not the issue there because the firmware's sort of too small to be too incorrect. <laughs> yeah, like an I-915 I has its complete, I don't know if it has dev core dump, but it has the equivalent, it has like its error code thing in DebugFS or somewhere that you can, again, it, it's a lot of information that I generally have never managed to use to fix anything, but I'm sure people have, because yeah, it's useful information, but yeah, I, I don't know if there's a good, I don't know, is FD info sort of useful in this area? Is DevCore probably more useful? Um, we, we tend to use it for the like, something goes wrong every three weeks. <laughs> kind of thing, so it's not it's not active polling. It's just have this thing run this test until it eventually dies, and you know, ping us a big big old file. Yeah, like that that sort of lot, especially when there's firmware involved, sounds like you would want to dump as much information, out, especially if you're looking for power management style bugs, where you you know, it's like yeah, that state's just not information the driver probably has, or you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, that, that's the problem. It's like how how do you distinguish between something that's misformed user space by, you know, that accidentally happens once every three weeks. So generally my assumption is if it only happens once every three weeks, it's a power management bug, but that's not always true, but it's <laughs> usually a good basis for figuring it out. It's like, yeah, that rate, that rate of failure is generally a, a you know, a hardware or firmware level problem. Whereas like every time you, every time I run this app and it crashes right here, yeah, it's pretty much a, a memory corruption in the app or a stupidity in the driver. But Occasionally you do find, but it's that it's how much information. I don't know if there's any way to standardize it. It might be the mechanism for dumping it. Dev core dump is probably suitable, and we should just push that into more people. But yeah, I'll just second the the um, the state dump. It's really important to get as much information, like whether it's into D message or into a dump, as possible about what might have happened. I mean, in a lot of cases, like in our case in Chrome OS, we've got a fleet of devices that we can't hope to reproduce every issue. So what we get from the dump is like all we have to go on. And if it's not enough for us to debug it or if it's not enough for um, a SOC vendor to debug it, then the, the bug just goes unfixed. 
So it would be nice if you were talking about tests earlier, like an IGT. So if we had some different tests that weren't just hitting a debug FS interface to check the software handling for resets, but we're also doing things like, hey, run an infinite shader and see if it gets killed or, you know, reproduce, you know, have a have a actual small GPU program that reproduces some hang that we've had in the past, right, with the hardware, some out of bound calculation or whatever it is. If we have things like that and we can make sure that the drivers are one, correctly resetting, and two, like dumping information like this is what happened, that, that would be really helpful for higher level application developers. That, for example, this is something we run into with Chrome all the time. Graphics driver stays the same, Chrome gets updated, you know, Skia changes, it's submitting different GPU commands, suddenly we get a bunch of GPU hangs, like what's going on? Well, we don't have enough information, so um, the more we get, the better. Um. Okay, yeah, that was, okay. I mean, having a standardized uh, core dump interface like you were describing earlier would be ideal. The problem is that a lot of times the firmware is out to lunch and not able to populate any data into that. Yeah. What do you do then? Yeah, I feel that, um, yeah, that, that's why I, I read in, uh, in that way because I feel that uh, most of the useful information is locked inside a firmware, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's hard for for the open source driver to to do something anyway, right? Yeah. Um, do you have more and questions, more more feelings about GP resets? I'm not question that sort of like. Do we care about reporting that sort of stuff like to the like to the app? Like is there a different is there is there a space for like two interfaces here? One for like dev core dump the whole thing went down, or is there one for like reporting more like this specific app crashed to backtrace in the app? Like like the same as like you would with a CPU crash by an app. Like, like you know, so one is like a catastrophic system crash and one is like this context with this one app in it has broken and we just want to report that information in the app standard out before the app dies. You know, it's like, is there two different things and we should probably try and separate that out a bit to think of what should be in one or the other? Yeah, um, I know that um, Radview has something for that because on Mesa you, you, you know that uh, you're, you can poke if the context was guilty or not and I think on Mesa you have um, an MVR that you do get there and every time it detects that it was guilty, it will try to, to dump um, everything. Uh, but yeah, it's very ad hoc as well. Like, you know, do you, you can sort of dump out all the, all of the BOs and all your state structures and, you know, what's still in the ring buffer, like what you last emitted when it was guilty, but you're not going to get a usable backtrace, right? Because it's turned up sometime later and you're not in that execution flow anymore. So. I'm not sure how much useful you can get to apps that isn't what dev core dump can already do, which is, you know, here's basically everything that was mapped into VA at the time. And, you know, here's here's the ring buffer and go stare at that for a week. Good luck. Yeah, it's very hard to link. You have the kernel information, have the user space information. And uh, somewhere that is the problem, but it's very hard to link both things. Yeah. Um, more comments? Okay, I think we're good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.